In this tutorial, we're looking at Wellman profiles as well as Wellman corner treatments. Um, this I'm going to use on a section of already installed Wellmans that comes with SolidWorks 2022. If you like and are getting value from this content, please consider subscribing to get into it. Once again, we're in SolidWorks 2022. We're using millimeters as our measurements and we're into new part. Okay, we go again on the top plane, top plane normal two, sketch, and we'll just use a center rectangle. On our center rectangle, we go a little bit bigger than usual, and we'll say 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters. This is a nice big square. So click OK on our dimension, close our sketch. We had opened our Wellman's tab last time. Click on the blank gray space on your toolbar. Right click, tabs, and we are looking for Wellman's. Mine is already in place. Just click that Wellman's and this will come up. So once again, we're on structural member. So we have inch or ISO, so we're running with ISO. We will use a square tube down our list. When we do custom weldments, you can actually put in your own sections and all in this, and you can have your menu space as well. Square tube. Size of our tube, we will say is 40 by 40 by four. Then we have new group. We just click on our section. Click one, click two, click three, click four. Now we can visually see what our sections are going to be like when they're laid out. They all have nice clean miters. But our sketch is in the center of our sections. We'll just locate our profile first. So as you can see, when you click locate profile, you can see one, two, three. There's lots of different points we can locate our profile on. Sometimes this is a little bit awkward, so you could often spin it, but that might deactivate the command. So if you activate the command again, click it in the same, the profile should come back up. So there is our profile sketch. If we want our line to land on the outside top, click. Now you can see our profile is on the outside top. Click profile, locate profile again, inside bottom. Once the little points come up in orange, you know that the command is active and it's able to move the profile. See that's inside bottom. And just for the sake of this, we'll, you can also go center profiles, outside center, outside center. And we just go center, center, which is that one. As you can see, our profile is back in center. Lots of people ask questions about uh, the location of profiles. If we want to align the profile against another um, object that's already in the, the sketch, we can click that alignment and it will turn these profile alignments or twist the profile to match the alignment. So we're back up to mirror profile. Obviously, if you want to put mirror back and forward across a plane, um, on this one, it's, there's nothing really to show on this one, but it'll be on our, our next custom profile because you can see it much clearer. Uh, apply corner treatment. So we have our miter, which is there at the moment. But say if you just want a butt end, you can click your butt ends, it'll butt end all joints. And then the opposite of that is the opposite way. We'll butt end all joints again. Now, as you can see, that joint is a straight 90, but the lip on our box iron is a nice uh, curved radius. So if you want to cut the box iron to match that lip, we can click to extend the edge, or straight 90, which we more than likely just use for fabrication. If we want to take our corners, make them all nice miter corners, we want control under each individual corner. You can see that when we're in this profile, we can click this red, click to specify corner treatment, this red dot on one corner only. That brings up this nice box here. This box can also be quite tricky. <clears throat> but say if we have a nice miter, want a butt end, see all the rest of them are still miters. Butt end on the opposite, all the rest are still miters. And we want to set the corner specific well gap. We set that there and we will say one millimeter. 
the sake of it. Now our joint is moved back. Very same with our miter if we want to put in a weld gap. This is object one, or group one, trim order one. If you were building a table and there was another uh, weldment coming out, it will give you three or four different versions of this trim order, which would allow you to decide if they want to be mitered to the top with a butt, to, butt joint to the leg, all three mitered, all three butt jointed, etc. We will get to that tutorial as well. Good. So now we have one of our miters has a one mil well gap. Further miters don't. If we want to set our well gap on all miters, in one mil on this section here, click. And we see all our joints have a one mil miter. If we want to make our sections bigger or smaller, we decided we want to change sections. So I have an 80 by 80 by five. Click down on a group size, sections change up. And we click go. We still have our uh, well gap. Materials, plain carbon. Get rid of our sketches by hiding them. Chop it down, isometric. There's our square welded section. If we built it in square weldment and we wanted then to change it to pipe weldment, we can just say pipe and we'll say 33 by 04. And now we have our pipe with a one mil weld gap. Likewise, there's plenty of other sections that this can work with and that's what makes it so handy that if you were working with sections and for some reason the plan had changed for that section, you can easily swap these sections out. So it's probably a good one to do is our angle section. So if we have our angle section, remember our top plane is where our angle section is sitting, so our angle is at the bottom. But we want our angle to change direction. If we click edit feature, Travel down to mirror profile, we click mirror, click OK. Now our section folds out to it. Angle profile again, feature, we will say on the vertical axis, click OK. Now our profile is inside. And you can go through any combination that you pr pretty much want. Once again, if you go down to, uh, we have it on a vertical axis and we start moving our angle adjuster. Move it out, probably would give more visual. I won't go past that. So you want to move it in, and you had some method of trying to cut this, which you could probably set up a uh, jig, etc., and you get that cut. But that's how you would move around your angles. So when we lay this out on a drawing, it will be a different um, type of drawing, but it will tell you all angles, etc. So if we just set that back at 90 degrees. And we'll have a look at C channel. See what they give you on C channel, 100 by 10. So if you want a reinforcing frame. That's our C channel. The SOLIDWORKS comes with a very limited set of um, weldment profiles and you kind of build up that set as you are working with the, the software and you can match it in to your supplier so you'd often find that the curvature maybe of box iron etc is uh, not the type that you use you might use a smaller curved box iron or your supplier might have a smaller radius box iron and one that often gets me is the angle iron so if we just set it back to angle iron SOLIDWORKS Angle iron comes with a round edge. Prefer to use angle iron that has a small flash. It's much easier to model with because you can uh, use make commands and things uh, much easier because it has a flat surface. So I'll just show the, the gusset command when we're here. 
So we'll change this back to our square tube. Let it load, click. So we're back to this one. We have a gusset command. If we click gusset, we want to add the two faces that that gusset is going to be put into. And it auto generates the gusset. So we have a few different gusset types. We have our D1 versus D2 and D1 versus D2 versus D3 and 4, which is this type of gusset or the normal V gusset. So say if we went with the square type and we put in 50 mil, 50 mil, and we put them down as 10 millimeters, we now have that type of gusset. We can do below, um, above our center point. And we have our angle of 45 degrees. So we now have the thickness of the gusset. So we're saying our thickness is in the center of the gusset. We're going to put in a five mil thick gusset. And now we can just set where that gusset wants to sit. So it's below, above, center, offset. So we can go offset above, offset below, and put in our offset distance if required. Gussets are very um, easy to uh, do. And if we click OK to our gusset, when we go back to our cut list, it now tells us we have one feature, which is a gusset. If we go to our fillet, chamfer the back of our gusset. So you will chamfer. Will we can now cut our gusset so that when someone is welding, they can weld the full length of the line while having the end of the gusset interfere and then weld either side of the gusset to seal. That is an exercise on how to make basic weldments, how the corner treatments are applied and how you can add gussets. If you're getting value from this tutorial, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.